What's up guys, today I'm really excited because Isotope has just announced and released RX8. If you're not already familiar with RX, it's a software that I and a lot of other audio professionals swear by. It does denoising, it does all kinds of cleanup and really, really finite, detailed recovery of a lot of audio problems that you might run into in pretty much any realm of sound. I've talked a lot about it before because I use it on a daily basis to solve all kinds of problems with sound and get the most out of my audio. So today I wanna to walk you through some of the newest and coolest features that they've added and give you a rundown of how they can fix problems you didn't even know that you could solve. Before we get started, a bunch of you guys have been asking about how to support the channel. I just set up a Patreon account with a bunch of different tiers to get way deeper into audio. I'll be doing things like live streams where you can ask me any questions about audio that you might have, plus giveaways of gear and sound effects, as well as extra videos that are a little bit deeper dives into specific topics that you can suggest. Your support is what lets me dedicate that much more time to talking about sound and getting this information out there. So so head on over to the link in the description. There will be giveaways, there will be free stuff, there's gonna be live Q and A's and more. We can get an even deeper dive into the world of audio. All right, let's get into some of the new features of RX-8. The first big one is a new module called Guitar Denoise. If you've ever had to record a guitar or really any stringed instrument, especially one you play with a pick, you're gonna run into all kinds of issues, whether it be amp hum or buzz in cables or squeaks and clicks and stuff from hand movement on strings, as well as pick noise. So unless you really know what you're doing, that can be really challenging in a home studio environment. So Guitar Denoise is a perfect solution to getting a lot of those issues solved. Loading up this module, it's super easy to use. You've got an amp, squeak, and pick section, and each one of those has a sensitivity slider and a reduction slider. In the amp section, you can train this module to whatever noise your amp or guitar itself might actually be generating. So you can just eliminate it and it'll be really, really pristine and clear. The squeak section allows you to remove individual finger squeaks squeaks across the fretboard, and you can change between short and long squeaks so you can get really dialed in processing and it'll sound really natural. And the pick section is pretty self-explanatory. Whenever you play a guitar with a pick, especially if you've got it really close mic'd exactly to the sound hole, you're going to get a lot of that pick movement and it's going to sound really sharp and kind of tinny. So this section specifically eliminates a lot of that. You can control how harsh the attack of each picking is, and you can again dial back the sensitivity as well as how much you're reducing that picking. So you can really balance the natural sound of the guitar with all of the accents and subtle nuances that you add as an instrumentalist. And of course it sounds best when you kind of address these problems individually. So Guitar Denoise allows you to turn on or off each section within it and you can really dial in on exactly the problems that you need to solve. The next module that's gotten a lot of improvements and I'm really excited about is the Music Rebalance module. And that basically allows you to take a finished stereo mix of music and isolate or raise or lower or individual elements within that, like the drums or the bass or the vocals. And that's super useful in post-production because most of the time I'm just receiving a stereo mix of whatever song is gonna be layered into a film or a television show. It's way more helpful to have individual stems of each element within that song so I can control which elements I wanna feature around things like dialogue or sound effects. And with a stereo print, I'm just married to adjusting the levels of the whole song. Instead with stems, I can just say, oh, the bass is kind of muddying up these sound effects. I can just lower the bass and keep everything else. Oh, the drums are a little bit distracting. Let me pan them back in the room a little bit so that they're a little bit more on the sides rather than the front and I can kind of leave space for dialogue or other sounds. Music Rebalance allows you to make all those choices really easily just by adjusting some sliders up and down. And you can also adjust how long it takes to process and how good the quality of that separation is gonna be with your separation slider and setting the algorithm anywhere between good and best. So again, if you're in the music world, you have that much more control over individual elements elements in a final mix if you need it. And if you're in post-production, now you can actually stem out individual pieces of a song if all you've received is a two track and you need a little bit more control, which is huge. And it's something I run into on every project that I work on. All right, the next module is really crazy. It's the Spectral Recovery module. And this is specifically designed around recovering the quality lost in internet calls like Skype or Zoom. Now, this is about the average level of quality you can expect with any of those services. And as you can tell, it really doesn't hold a candle to professionally recorded audio. This is exactly the type of audio that Spectral Recovery was designed 
things to help. And loading this module up, it's pretty straightforward to use. All you do is load up a recording of a call and you highlight the area that you really wanna fix and you hit learn. Spectral Recovery will analyze your audio and figure out what needs to be fixed and dial in a couple of settings, the cutoff and the smoothing parameters for you. The reason these calls don't sound very good is because there's so much noise reduction going on. And in order to speed everything up so that you can talk in real time, a lot of audio information is just thrown away and it really focuses in on just the necessities to hear the voice. Spectral Recovery's cutoff frequency finds where that information started being lost and it allows you to regenerate things above that. The smoothing parameter helps reduce artifacting so things sound a little bit more natural when they're regenerated. And the amount, of course, is how aggressive you want your recovery to actually be. Adjusting the vowel or sibilant balance tells Spectral Recovery what kinds of frequencies you want it to regenerate above that cutoff frequency. And by checking the spectral patching box, Spectral Recovery will actually kind of act like Adobe's content aware fill in Photoshop. And it'll look around at some of the audio that exists around where these losses occurred. And it'll try and intelligently regenerate that audio so there's nothing missing. As soon as you're happy with those parameters, you can hit render. And while it's not gonna magically turn your Zoom quality call into a perfectly recorded studio voiceover, it'll really help the overall quality of a call. This is a significant difference and a significant improvement over just the raw audio. Pretty impressive for a module that has five controls. I'm also really excited to try this out on sound effects, especially ones that were recorded, you know, 60 or 70 years ago, because a lot of the time those sounds are recorded on degraded mediums with not the greatest gear, and they don't sound as modern anymore. So I'm really curious to see what this will do in recovering quality that wasn't necessarily lost, but maybe just wasn't able to be captured at the time. And finally, the last module I want to talk about is the loudness control module. This is specifically designed around meeting broadcast and internet streaming loudness standards, which can be really, really complex and hard to understand if you don't know what you're looking at. Basically, the idea behind these loudness standards is to get everybody kind of working with audio in a specific range of loudness so something doesn't come on and get way crazy loud and then way quiet and then way loud again, which the internet is kind of the wild west and it can be really challenging to kind of dial in all of that for a consistent experience. A lot of online streaming services like Spotify or YouTube you can upload your sound to and they'll normalize it to a more acceptable level within their internal standards. But broadcast television is way more stringent. There are actually QC departments for each individual channel that if you have a mix that's too loud or too quiet they'll come back and say we can't put this out you need to remix your piece. I've done a little bit of a deeper dive on loudness before so if you want to know more check out the link above but basically Basically, you have a few parameters that allow you to get whatever final mix you've done forced into whatever standard you need to meet without doing too much damage or degrading the creative choices that you've made. Now, you have four parameters with loudness control. Those are true peak, integrated, short term, and tolerance. True peak measurements are pretty complex, but basically it's a simulation of exactly how loud audio is going to be when played out of a system. It's really, really specific and it's very technical, so I won't get too deep into it but it's effectively exactly how loud the loudest parts of your audio are allowed to get. Your integrated loudness is an average measurement across the entirety of your audio program from start to finish using loudness units full scale on a K-weighted curve. And that's kind of technical and really not that important unless you really want to understand the technical details of it. But basically that's the standard for pretty much everything broadcast at this point is LKFS. Your short-term loudness is exactly the same idea except it's measured in three second chunks, which can be really useful if you're finding problem areas or you need to go back and revisit a specific section of your audio to adjust individual levels just in a little chunk. And finally, there's the tolerance slider. If you look at any broadcast specification from any network or streaming service like Netflix or Amazon or Discovery or any of those, they'll specify, hey, your audio program loudness, your integrated loudness has to be, say, minus 24 or minus 27 LKFS. But there's a margin of error for that to be plus or minus one LKFS, two LKFS. So the tolerance slider allows you to choose what that actual variable might be. And it'll again, keep your mix more intact while kind of brute forcing everything back into the standard that you're being asked to deliver at. Once you've finished a mix, if you haven't been mixing to spec, once you've gotten those numbers from wherever you're gonna be distributing on, you can just match them in loudness controls parameters and hit render and it'll dial your mix exactly to where it needs to be within those specifications by a single amount and limit all of your audio so you're not going over and clipping anything and it'll again keep 
all of your creative choices within that mix intact. And finally, one last other cool feature that Isotope snuck in. What good is good sounding audio if it doesn't look cool too? So now you can reskin the spectrogram into a blue to purple setting rather than the orange to cyan that we're used to seeing. It's much easier on the eyes and I think it looks pretty cool too. So I'm pretty excited to have something that looks a little bit different on top of all these great new features. So hopefully you enjoyed the tour of Isotope RX-8. There are plenty of other really cool improvements that they've added under the hood. So you should definitely check it out. They're updating their elements, standard, and advanced packages, and they're available as of September 2nd. So head over to Isotope's site, pick it up now if you can, and it's going to be really, really useful to every audio project you end up working on. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit like, hit subscribe. I'm over on Instagram at AXK, and as always, thanks for watching.